Welcome to my shop. Today I'm freshening up the fuel system on this John Deere 2440, so go ahead and follow along with me. My John Deere 2440 does not start easily on its own. It smokes like crazy and at the top of the muffler you can see that it is wet stacking. These are all indications to me that the fuel system definitely needs a tune up. So I'm going to replace the filters and the injectors. I'll show you the process along the way so that you, if you have a John Deere of similar generation you can follow along and at the end you'll have the confidence to make this repair on your own tractor. So let me start this tractor up and I'll show you what's happening when I try to start it. My tractor is in park so it's safe to start. Okay, so you could see how long it took. It had to roll over a little bit until it started. And then once it did start, it smoked like crazy. If that's the case on your tractor, you might be able to follow these steps and it might help you with the way that your tractor runs. So go ahead and follow along with me. I have my hood off and my uh, lines here are exposed. I've removed all of my other return lines. This is the last one to come off. There might be diesel inside your return lines and that's okay. I'm just gonna move the top of my injector aside so that I can access this bolt here. And then I'm just gonna take that light off. Oops. I just think I'm at the top of the bolt there. There we go. Okay, I got that off. Let me set that aside. The next thing I'm going to do is take these lines off. I am going to use line wrenches here and you'll need to do the same. You want to be careful with these lines so that you don't um, break them or damage them, twist them around. Let me get this on here, slide it down into place and then that will come back. Once I have this loosened up enough, I think I can turn it by hand the rest of the way. Yeah, let me get that other line wrench off. I'll loosen this up and then that line will come right off. Now I'm ready to take the injector out. I can use a lady slipper like this one and uh, get underneath the injector. You gotta find the right spot to pry it out. I think I'm there. Just like that, get underneath it and then it will pull out. Kind of gives that initial pull and then it will come out the rest of the way. So, there, oops, there's the injector that we're taking out. Next, I'm gonna take this over and put it on a tester and show you what's happening on it. This is my old injector in the test stand here. I'm gonna give this a pump and we'll watch what happens. First, I can see that fuel is dripping out and then you did see a little bit of a pop there. Let me do the pop again. It does spray fuel, however, it's not atomized. It's definitely not how we would like to see an injector perform on a test stand. This confirms to me that the injector is indeed a problem on this tractor and why it's running the way that it is. I have a brand new injector in my test stand. I want to show you how a new one performs versus the old one. So as I'm coming down on the pressure, there's no dripping whatsoever. And when it popped, you saw a very nice um, atomized spray of diesel fuel there. That's exactly what we want to see. Now I realize that you may not have a test stand in your shop or have access to one. That's okay. I just wanted to show you here that if you took your injectors to a shop, this is what they're looking for you so that you're familiar with that process. Um, sometimes people will take them to a shop and have them tested or if you are confident in your diagnosing, you can just go ahead and replace them without doing this test. But this is what you're looking for when you test an injector and under pressure you want to see that really nice atomized spray of fuel. We're ready to prepare the new injectors to go into the tractor so you need to do some disassembly on your old injector. This is the very top for the return line. I'm going to take that off. What we're trying to do is to salvage this nut. So then I'm going to slide this nut down a little bit here and I can use a wrench to remove the top of the injector here or the very um, yeah, the very top of it. It doesn't matter on the old injector that I pull this apart since we're wrecking it, we're not using it anymore, but I would never pull the top off of my new injector. So now I have my new nut here and I'm just gonna use a pick. I'm trying to get this little rubber spacer or washer out of there. I have brand new spacers to go in there next. Uh, so once again, if I damage this spacer a little bit, picking it out of here, it doesn't matter, but there it is, that's the old one. 
And then I'm gonna slide this right onto my new injector. It slides on super easy when um, the uh, rubber washer isn't in there. So I'm gonna slide that over and here's my new rubber washer. I'm gonna slide that over next. This one gets a little bit hung up on the very top of the injector. I'm just gonna be a little gentle with this seal, but slide it over. Notice that I'm keeping the very red caps on my injector until I put it in the tractor. I don't want to, I just wanna keep them clean, so I'm leaving these on for now. I'm just gonna slide that up with my new rubber seal inside there, and then I'll put this on for now, and I'll tighten this up the rest of the way once I drop it into the tractor. I'm gonna take the cap off the bottom of my injector and then drop it right down into the hole. This is gonna go a little bit hard, but it will slide down in there. I'm gonna just move this fuel line out of the way and slide that over into place. The next thing I have to do is get all this lined up. So the spacer is gonna go underneath here. I'm just gonna set that right in there in place. Then I have this bolt that goes in here. Notice that there's three spacers on top of there and then this little washer. This so all has to line up. This goes around the injector like that, and then that is gonna drop into the hole. I wanna make sure I'm through the spacer. I am. Let's turn that and see if I'm on top of the hole where it needs to be. Oh yeah. I got it started there. I'm gonna tighten it up. And the next step will be to connect all the fuel rail system. Now I'm ready to connect the fuel system. So I'm gonna take this cap off of my injector and then I'll be ready to put the line down on here. Notice that I'm starting this by hand because I do not wanna get this cross threaded. They are kind of difficult to get started though. I'm gonna turn that and then it's a three quarter inch wrench to tighten that up. Here on the um, top of the injector, remember I only tighten this up with my fingers when I had it on the bench. So I'm just gonna put a pair of pliers on the top, and then a wrench down at the bottom to tighten this up. And that'll be good to go once that's tightened up. There we go. Okay, let me straighten out that. I guess I can't straighten it with my fingers anymore. Let me turn it just ever so slightly. There we go. The next thing I'll do is I'll put these return lines on. These just snap into place like that. I'm gonna tighten this one up. I'll put my next return line on and then we'll bleed the system. On this side of the tractor, I'm going to change the fuel filter. You can see that it's the date's written on my fuel filter and it's been a while since it's been replaced. Plus, while I'm working on the fuel system, it's a good idea to replace it. So I have a screwdriver underneath here and I'm trying to pry this top off. There we go. Let me set this down. This bracket will kind of fall back and then the filter just comes right off. Like that, let me set that down. You can see it was pretty full of fuel there. Let me clean this up a little bit and then we'll be ready to set the new one on. Notice that the filter is directional. You can see this prong up here that's at the top and on the back of the new filter, you see where the grommet is for that. So let me set this up on here. These filters are a little fragile, so I don't wanna drop it. Push that in. Make sure I'm on the grommet. I'm not. Here we go. It feels better. Let me push that in. This loader frame makes this repair a little tricky. There we go. Got it. Okay. And then my casing for that fell down here in the loader frame. So let me put this back underneath here. Notice that there's a tab underneath here that has to hook into place, and then the rest of this folds over and snaps back in there. Let me feel where my tab goes. Good, I got it where it needs to be. And then I'm gonna slide this under here. Oh, wish <laughs> this loader frame makes it so difficult. But I have small arms, so they'll fit through there. There we go, okay. That snapped into place just like that. Next, I'm going to loosen up this bleeder. I already loosened it up, it's in the 9 16th inch. And then on the pump here, I'm just gonna pump this up and down, back and forth, so that I fill that up with fuel. 
and I'm pumping it all the way until I see fuel coming out by the bleeder, which I see it coming out right there. Let me loosen that up and you'll see more fuel. Let me do that again here for you. This is what you want to see. You want to see that fuel coming out of the bleeder. You keep pumping it. Got to get all the way through the system here manually. So you know, take a few pumps. I can hear it going. Bear with me here while we get it up all the way to the bleeder. I thought it was there. It must have just been some residue from before. There we go. You can see the fuel coming out now. So that tells me that it's through the filter there. I'm going to tighten that bleeder up and then we'll be on to the next step. Next thing I'm going to replace is the air filter. This should be performed under regular maintenance and check it Take a look at the date there, the year 2000. Phew, air filter should definitely be changed more often than that. Look how bad it looks. Really, really bad shape. This has both the inner and the outer filter. So we got the outer one off. This one has this kind of, this kind of holds it in place there. There we go. I can turn this by hand a little quicker than with those pliers. This is an easy replacement to do but is often neglected so if it's been a while since your air filter has been changed be sure to change it this is really important and it's not not that hard to change it makes a big difference then we just have the new one ready to slide in it will slide in in the same way and tighten up At this point, I'm ready to make sure that fuel has reached all of my injectors. So I have my lines loosened up. They're on there and they're tight. I probably went all the way tight and then back out, I don't know, two turns, just a little bit so that there's enough of enough looseness that fuel can come out all four injectors. I have my battery cable connected and I'm ready to roll the engine over. When I do, I'm watching for fuel to come out of those lines. So watch here. Okay, I saw it in two of them. You, did you see that squirt right there? That's what I want to see on all the cylinders. There we go. I just saw that one down here. Again, I see it coming out there. Let's check the fourth one. Yeah, looks good to me. So I see fuel coming out on all my system. Let me get the key off there. Now I'm going to go back and tighten up all of my lines completely. I put my muffler on, so now I'm ready to start the tractor up and see how it runs after these new injectors. I am pleased, I'm very pleased. So what I'm looking for, I didn't put the hood on so I can make sure there's no leaks. I'm gonna really thoroughly inspect before I put the hood back on the tractor. We put new injectors in, we touched the lines. Just wanna make sure that everything's tightened up as it should be and that there's not an issue there. I'm looking up my muffler to make sure that the tractor isn't smoky. You can see how clean this one runs compared to how it started. It was super smoky when we started. Um, another thing that I want to check for is make sure that it's running on all four cylinders. Occasionally an injector might take a little bit of time to get working when you put a new one in. Mine runs on all four cylinders. It runs smooth. It sounds good. I am really pleased with how this tune-up went and I'm excited to use this tractor. It will run a lot better now that I've improved the injectors and the filters. So when you are ready to do a tune-up on your tractor like I've done on mine, please purchase the parts on my website. That purchase helps to fund future tractor tutorials. You can buy the injectors and the filters for your repair. My website is farmtractorrepair.com. Uh, while you're on there, you can also look at a few other licensed John Deere items that we have on the site. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We release new videos all the time.